In this episode of Accelerator TV, we go head to head with Stephen Ellison, better known as the eclectic, spacey beatmaster, Flying Lotus. Here Ellison talks about his great aunt, jazz legend Alice Coltrane, his former life as a filmmaker, and being part of the Nintendo generation, all while kicking ass on Robotron and Street Fighter. This episode was made possible by Converse. For more information, go to converse.com. Hi, it's Flying Lotus, chilling here in San Francisco. We're gonna go check out some vintage arcade games. I'll probably get spanked up in every one of them. You know, I'm from Nintendo generation, man. I'm used to hearing bleeps and, and all those things and whatever it is I'm listening to. I think that that's uh, it's a comforting sound to some people, man. You can make a whole 8-bit version of, of my record and it'd, be, it'd probably be kind of fun, you know. first system I had was the Nintendo, the NES Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt pack with the, uh, the Zapper. You know, you'd be out there shooting at the little ducks and then your dog would make fun of you if you missed it. <laughs> You'd always try to shoot the dog, but you couldn't. Fuck that dog. Dog, you bastard, making fun of me. Oh, right, right, right. I'm telling my own story. Auntie, I knew her as a, a very spiritual person. She would do discourses at her ashram and things on Sunday. She was the mystic of the family. Throughout my life, I heard she was a musician. She did some things with, with John Coltrane. He was the one everyone wanted to talk about. John Coltrane, John Coltrane. You know, maybe within the past, I'd say like 10 years, you know, she had been uh, making music again. And then she had to start touring. That's when I started to see a musician again. More than a musical mentor, she was like my spiritual advisor. Before I, I got seriously into making music, man, I, uh, I was more into making film and I was doing a documentary on her. We were to document a show out in Paris. First time I ever been, I'm holding the camera, you know, hanging out with my auntie and my cousin Ravi, who's also a great musician. We, we just got to Paris, right? Cab driver's taking us to the spot. He was asking, oh, so you guys, you, you guys back there, you guys musicians? Or? They were, they, they all said, yeah, yeah, we can do this, man. And he looked at me, I didn't say anything. My auntie, she said, oh yeah, this guy, he's a musician too. He thinks he's a filmmaker though. She, she knew. But then she called me out. Mortal Kombat 2, I wish they had that one here. This is a Marvel game, one of my favorites of all time, I'd say. To me, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the Dreamcast. Best fighter ever, in my opinion. I was living at my mom's house, uh, and the only TV I would watch is Adult Swim. I would, you know, get up, you know, Saturday, late up, late night kind of thing, go for a little drive before I watch, get high real quick, watch all the cartoons, and um, there was one, one night I saw it and they had, uh, they, they had a little blip on saying, like, yeah, you think you got some beats, huh? Think you got some tracks, send them over. And then they put the address on there, and uh, you know, I didn't really think much of it. I was like, they don't want to hear my shit. But my mom was the one, she said, look, if you put it together, I'll send it out. You know, it seemed like the next week, I got an email asking for a track list and they were playing stuff on the TV, man. And the, first, the first thing they played, they made a promo for the boondocks around one of my tracks. It just, yeah, it blew me away, man. The only TV you watch, you know, you're hearing your music on. I had a crazy geek moment, man. 
Hearing my live shows will, and they, they're only used to my recordings, will probably be a little confused at first because the live show is a little bit more of a, of a party show, like get up, get up shit, you know? Whereas my records are more, I think, headphone music. And uh, I'd rather it be that way because I think if you're gonna make an album, it should be something that people sit and think about, they listen to, and it's, it can be that that experience, that engaging experience where it's it's not just uh, mindless club music, mindless bass music, which again, there's a time and place for all of it, but um, not, in the, not on the album, I'd say. Basically what I did with the record was try to capture an era uh, of time, man, and capture a frame of mind that I'm in when I make tracks, so like, there's certain times where you just feel a sort of connection to the, the work. That it's not about any kind of pressure, it's not about any kind of ego, it's not about pleasing anybody. You're just in a zone, you're working and you're having fun doing it. And if, if everything stops, man, everything stops around you. You like go out and you're like meditating when you're working, man. You get into that zone. That's when I, I, I pick those tracks out. It's cool, man, to go back to the basics, you know, like, who can get the highest score, you know, it's not about fatalities or, you know, trying to save the game, go here, come back later, just get a high score, you know, do that, put your initials in that shit. That's what life's all about anyway, who gets the highest score, isn't it? Weird. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, you can flip that shit, man. It's easy. You have to like think Euro though. With that one. Oh, you can lie. You could even just flip it off the TV show where you come on down. And then it's over. Tim and Eric, awesome show. Great job. It's my favorite thing right now. I can watch that stuff over and over again. It's like. I think it's like 10 minutes an episode, but it's just super quick stuff, man. Like, your attention span is just gonna get shorter by watching this stuff, but um, it's really good. Great job.